Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. We're preparing for our pixel quilt today. So if you wanna see how to prepare your foundations for blocks like these, please stay tuned. I went over in a previous video how I am working on my quilt guild project for this year. Our assignment is to create something that's based on um, street art. So I found this um, photograph of a mural that's in um, Arizona. I actually found the picture on themuralco.com. And I decided since we went to Arizona last summer that I want to create something that, um, that is from that area to remind me of the trip. So I found this. Uh, that says magic and it's all these vibrant colors and all that and then figuring out how I wanted to recreate it I decided that pixels would be the way to go so I took a sheet of graph paper and I have placed it on there and I've already completed um, the first panel I decided to divide it up into three sections so that it would be more manageable chunks so I wasn't just doing random all over um, and so in this video, I want to show you how to prepare your, um, the foundations for the quilt, uh, ahead of time. What you could do is in checking this out and deciding how you want to do it is as you look in your, through your graph paper, some of the sections are completely solid. So that is definitely a first option for you going ahead and choosing which blocks are solid because you won't have to, uh, piece those. So I went ahead and from the beginning, um, I did the gray kind of, um, but here I went through and I looked at the rest of the quilt and decided what all blocks would be solid that I wasn't going to piece. And I've already cut those out of my fabric so that they're ready, um, and labeled when it's time to, um, to put them in the panel. All right, here's my first panel. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure it's the right way. It's right here. This is panel one. Can you see it? Um, it's the first part of the M. So let me show you where it is on the on the actual picture. So it's actually the you can see the curve right here of the M, and then it's actually through just where the A begins. Right. So um, that's where I am. Section one is completed and I've done about half of the blocks for section two. Uh, but now I want to show you how I'm preparing my foundation so that you can have an idea how to, um, how to start putting a, a quilt like this together. So let me get my, um, my foundations and I'll be right back. So these are some of the um, blocks that we're going to be making based on the pixels from the quilt or from the, the picture. Here's kind of a close up of um, the graph paper. The parts that are X'd out are things that I've already finished. And then the open ones are still, they still need to be done. You can see that uh, the first section's already done and I've shown you that one. I've done uh, three rows on the day. So um, what we're gonna be creating are blocks that are like this. So the individual pixels, this is kind of uh, what we're gonna look, look at and you'll see as we create them, you'll see all the colorways and it'll magically come together hopefully the more we do. Since you can't see the pixels on the video, I made kind of a, um, a mock-up of one. And basically what we're doing is when we uh, get to our foundations, uh, we're going to use proportions to determine where the um, where the points are going to go. For example, this one about two thirds up, um, and then the next one at the corner. And here's the block that was created from from this template. So first, let's go over how to prepare these foundations, and then um, in the next video, we'll start actually putting some of these things together. For my foundations, I'm actually using three inch squares of newspaper that I've already cut out. 
um, that will make my finished blocks well they'll be like two and a half inches and um, it doesn't matter some of these are light on both sides um, some of them are dark on one side and light on the other it doesn't really matter we can use them all and I'll go over um, what I can do to make sure that that I can still see on the where it's dark my first step for these is going to be to take my ruler and I'm just using a six and a half inch square ruler and a pen and I'm going to mark the the boundary line so I'm going to basically mark off on this three inch square mark off a two and a half inch square now to do that what I'm doing I take my ruler and I'm going to put the um, on the edges like on these two edges that are closest to me I'm going to put that on the two and three quarter inch mark and then I'm going to trace around it to the two and a half inch mark on each side I'm actually making this a little dark, so hopefully you can see it on camera. And then I'm going to flip it around and put my marks on the two and a half, my ruler on the at the two and a half inch mark. So I'm lining those up with the um, with the lines I already drew. That's at two and a half inches, and then here is my next section. Alright, and let's see, can you see that? Uh oh, can you see it? That, okay. Now this is actually the, um, since we're doing kind of like paper piecing, um, we're actually going to build our block on this side, but we're going to stitch it through the back side. Alright, now next I would um, take my template, or take my, um, my pattern here, and for whatever block I'm going to create, I'm going to mark it here on the side that I drew the square on. So my actual pattern will be um, the part that's on the pattern. That's what's going to be inside this two and a half inch square. So I'm just going to choose a block on my next row. This is the, the D row. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and mark some reference points on here. So from here, I know I need to mark two, I like one third and two third on the bottom one third two third here and so I put some little dots there and then on this one on the right side I'm gonna mark a quarter inch up or a quarter of the way from the top and then just a little bit um, or that's on the side so this will be as well from the top all right and so then once I have my reference points, this is a pretty simple block. I'm going to use the ruler to help me draw the lines. Now, a lot of this pattern is curved, and so um, I'm just kind of fudging and making as much of it straight as straight as I can. The curves will come once we piece it together. All right, so this is, can you see, I don't know if we can see the marks. Okay, so you can see these are kind of where my marks are going to go. And then from here, I need to see what colors I need. That's where my actual piece is going to come in. So the piece that I'm drawing or that I'm making a template for, it's about right here around this G. So I'm going to need my darker orange, then white, then dark blue. And I'm just going to mark that on my pattern. And since I'm left-handed, I have to turn it around. So dark orange, white, dark blue. And I have, um, since I've made so many of these blocks, I know that D is dark blue. And then I just do D and an initial for the orange and so on. And the reason that I'm doing this is this is where I'm going to actually place my fabric. So it's going to tell me what color my fabric needs to go on. All right. So from this point, I can turn the paper over and I'm making sure that I have the, um, the top side, like it, that it's right side up when I flip it over. And from this point, I will go ahead and label the block. So this block is D18. So I'm labeling it here, D18. 
so that when I put my blocks in order to stitch them together, um, they'll be in the right order. And then I'm actually going to trace the lines from the front onto the back. And um, I actually do that by using my ruler and holding it up to the light so that I can trace it. So I'll do that and I'll come right back on camera. The back is now completely ready for um, my patchwork. All I have to do now is I'll place the fabric on this side and I'll show it or I'll sew it on these stitch lines here. So um, I'm really excited about this process. Um, so again, I've already finished the first section or the first large section. And now I'm on the second large section and the part that I actually just did for ca on camera it's one of the blocks that I have to prepare. So I'm going to go ahead and finish preparing the blocks and then uh, stitch them down. If you have any questions about this process, please leave them in the comments below. Please thumbs up this video and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!